All right, hi, welcome back, Attorney Steve Vondren. Today, in another new exciting episode of Litigation Whiteboard, we're gonna be talking about ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, website compliance. What on earth is Attorney Steve talking about today? Without further ado, let's go to the Attorney Steve Litigation Whiteboard and find out, okay. So everybody knows what the ADA is. I think everybody does. American with Disabilities Act, okay? This is where, you know, most people know when you go to restaurants and hotels, they need to have reasonable accommodations to take care of those people with disability. It's all about inclusivity and allowing those with handicaps, disabilities, um, to basically access places of public accommodation places of public accommodation. So everybody know that used to be uh, Target, you go to Target, that's a place, uh, hotels, restaurants, all that kind of stuff, the library, places of public accommodation. So now we have websites. Is this a place of public accommodation? Doesn't really seem like it's a kind of little counterintuitive, but the courts are now looking at this, especially in New York, um, there's a lot of cases being filed in New York where they feel that if you're selling a product on your website, that anybody in New York, up over here is New York, anybody is transacting and purchasing your product online, like an e-commerce or retailer site online, you need to have it accessible for people with vision problems and perhaps hearing problems, things like that, okay? So there are some new standards coming out. We call these over here WCAG, the, World, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. We're at 2.1 is the current version. So um, now this can get really technical. Usually on things like this, you're gonna want like a web, somebody's really a techie and a web person to come in and do some backend programming, some cleaning, cleaning up of your site. In fact, I'm getting a quote right now on my Vondren legal site. See how much it costs, not that I technically need to comply, but states like California are coming up with new laws. There may be a new law passing shortly where business owners in California all need to be concerned about website accessibility, website compliance. And so that's what we're talking about here. So these cases can be brought as federal cases. They can also, there are also um, state law components to it where there's various state law. California is working on their own version. I believe they're going to put it on their, the UNRU, the UNRU Act. But um, so let's take a look at this. Some, some of the general places of accommodation where courts have already found you need to be in compliance, several things. If you have apps like uh, domain, uh, Domino's Pizza, you got to go and you order the app through the website and everything else. Apps can be part of something where you need to comply with. This is very important. Websites, your website, is it accessible? And I'm gonna give you some tips over here, some very general tips. Is it, is it accessible to those with uh, vision problems, maybe color blindness and other types of things, okay? Um, here are some of the traditional um, places of public accommodation. If you're in any of these categories right now, you definitely need to get serious about thinking about ADA compliance because you don't wanna get hit with a lawsuit. Everybody knows you get hit with the federal court lawsuit, now your company's name is in searchable on Google, it's a public deal, you're gonna to have to hire an attorney, you're gonna to have to pay settlement fees, this, that, and the other. So it might make sense to get into compliance now to the best that you can under these WCAG 2.1 guidelines, okay? And these are put out, by the way, by the World Wide Web Consortium, WC3, World Wide Web, okay? Um, anyway, so online streaming services like Netflix, people are accessing your content, your product, or your service. They're transacting business over here in states like Oregon, Washington, California, Florida, Texas. Massachusetts is also in the game here. Okay, but hotels and motels, you're taking online reservations. You need to make sure that your um, technology is accessible, okay? Everybody else gets to book online, book a hotel. How about the disabled? How about somebody with um, certain disabilities? Okay, so these are things you can look at. Online retailers like Target, you can go on to these stores and buy right off their website. They have a bricks and mortar version. That's what I have, B&M, bricks and mortar version. If you have a bricks and mortar and, so you, you sell at a bricks and mortar location and you have the technology, you definitely wanna be considering 
website ADA accessibility compliance, okay? Um, what else? Bars, restaurants, um, people that allow their customers to view menus, place online orders, do things like that. Any technology or any company that's allowing that access to the normal public to get goods and services might want to be thinking about making it accessible via your website, your apps, your streaming services, okay? Um, and again, just traditional bricks and mortar companies where you have an e-commerce website and you're selling things on the internet, okay? Target is a good example. So that shows you now what's interesting here and why I have nationwide jurisdiction here. Usually, if a company wants to sue you, they come sue you where you're... Um, business is located so if you're located in california they can't sue you in new york you, you don't you're not out in new york you don't have minimum contacts okay what we call personal jurisdiction over you however the state like new york has a long arm statute they reach out and grab you and pull you into their state and they can exercise nationwide jurisdiction it's a very minimal standard. You can check your case law. But in general, if you're selling products to these other states, think about it because you may get hauled in to a federal court lawsuit that you, you got blindsided. You didn't see it coming. Now they want settlement fees. They want you to um, update your website. So be thinking about that now, actually. And there's a lot of companies out there, service providers, that are providing services in this area. Like I said, I just um, reached out to one I want to see. And I want to see also... Uh, what I have down here, SEO, SEO. Google likes things that are more accessible, things that are readable. Are there things that I can do that will not only help bring inclusivity, new clients, maybe that I haven't had, or other, maybe your business hasn't had, bring them into the family, make them clients and customers. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Um, but does it have a SEO, search engine optimization uh, benefit to it, okay? Um, Google likes readable content. So this is another area that I'm exploring right now with my own company that I'm looking to engage with. Um, some general tips here. Um, and by the way, this comes from Title III of the, of the uh, federal law, Title I of the American with Disabilities Act that deals with employment. That's where um, employers need to be, make reasonable accommodations if you're disabled, that's things. Um, Title II deals with cases against the government. Title III now we're dealing with the businesses, the private businesses, and the website compliance. So this is like, guys, this is pretty new, but take it, take it from me. I'm usually like way ahead of the curve here. I think this is going to get pretty huge. I think your company's going to want to, I would rather, why I'm looking at it right now, I would rather pay right now. Let's just pick a number. Say it's 7500 bucks to upgrade my website to get what's out there, make it more accessible, inclusive, then pay that in a settlement and then have to go pay that again. So just be thinking about this. It's good if you're a company owner. Um, if you're not sure, check it out. This is a good place to start, okay? I did this as well. Go to accessibilitychecker.org, accessibilitychecker.org. Put your URL for your company uh, website in there and they will run a audit, no charge. And it will point out some of the issues that you have on your website. Yes, I had them too. I have issues. Um, and then you can go um, engage somebody if you want to try to remedy those issues. But let's take a look at some of the things, and I'll let you go here, a couple of things. Um, contrasting, things that you can do to make your website more accessible. Colorblind, vision blind, hearing impaired, things like that, okay? Um, contrast, different colors and contrast. So don't use like all gray, you know, you have a gray background, gray text, gray links, gray everything. Give some contrast. That helps people that are colorblind, okay? Um, contrast your colors. Um, Backend programming, uh, I'm not a, a programmer and I can't tell you about this, but you can do some backend programming that can help you work with the screen readers that some of the visually impaired people are using. And you can do some backend tweaking to make it more accessible over here. Um, links, when you set links on your, you, you write a blog and you set some links, be use it descriptive. Don't just click on a link that, you don't just put the word link or click here. It doesn't, the screen readers don't know what that means. It'll just say link. So what you wanna do is put, click here to go to 
movie piracy page. Set the link. So have descriptive links is another one. Um, captions for your videos. There's a lot of tools out there now, especially um, if your company is engaging in TikTok marketing, Instagram marketing, Facebook marketing, YouTube, all these shorts. There are easy ways for you to put captions on your videos. And I, me personally, I like captions. Even uh, I'll watch them even with movies. My wife will go, why do you have this? Why do you have the caption on? I go, I don't know. I like to read it. It's actually... I don't know. I, I like to read it. Um, captions for your videos. Um, when you ha uh, post a photo, you can usually do what's called an alt tag. You can say, well, what is this picture about? It's a picture of a computer being hacked. Um, and so use these alt tags, okay? Um, browser zoom, okay? Uh, you want your website to make sure that your website allows for the zoom feature down big. Again, for people that can't see, maybe some of the older people are not being able to see your website and what's going on in there. Zoom, integrate your browser with Zoom in conjunction with your website. Um, companies can help you check out your site navigation. Um, there's different things about site architecture and things like that companies can help you with. And then other things like um, your PDFs, say you post PDFs or PowerPoints. There are ways to use tags and, and descriptive words and things like that to help make it more readable, okay? So these are just some general tips. Trust me, if you go to WCAG 2.1 standards, you'll find all kinds of tips, probably things that you'll go like, I don't even know what that means, but that's okay. This is the time, in my opinion, to get in and start looking at these issues. If you get a letter and you say, Attorney Steve, I got a demand letter, I can't believe this, we can help defend you, we can get you out of trouble, we can help you figure it out, okay, yes, there'll probably be a penalty, yes, you'll probably have to fix your website, but we can cross that bridge when we get there. So if you need help with website accessibility under the ADA, the American with Disabilities Act, you know where to find us on the web at attorneysteve.com. So there you go, you know more about website accessibility, you probably never even knew this was an issue. Feel free to share this video with your friends on your social media sites. You might just help another person or another company out. Have a great day, I gotta run general legal information only, not legal advice, bye now.